Hey everyone, welcome back to my guide for modding Fallout New Vegas in 2017. In the last episode, we installed the New Vegas script extender, the Fallout 4GB memory patch, the EMB post-processing engine, and we applied an EMB preset designed to enhance the Nevada Skies mod, which we haven't yet installed. In this episode, we're going to install and configure the Nexus mod manager, the load order optimization tool known as Loot, and we'll download and test a mod. So in the last episode, I told you that when we got done with those steps, we would be all ready to start modding, but that wasn't quite true. We're very close, but we're not quite there yet. So we're going to walk through the last few things you need to do, and then we'll install a mod to, to walk you through that particular process. So the first thing that we need to do to get started here today is we want to go ahead and configure our game launchers so that whenever they load, they will launch the 4 gigabyte patched version of Fallout instead of the original version. So we're going to go ahead and update Steam as well as LaunchBox BigBox so that whenever we kick off our game, it will kick off the 4 gigabyte patched version instead of the standard vanilla version. So we want to go ahead and get an image to put in the Steam to represent the game. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to Google and just type in these keywords, uh, New Vegas Steam Grid. Uh, if you put Steam Grid in quotes, you'll get a much larger range of images to pick from. Uh, and then pick any of these images that appeal to you. Uh, I picked an image here that says Script Extender just to let me know that uh, this is the version that is basically modded. So what you're going to want to do is take this image, so you can click this view image, and then right click on the image, save image as, and then you want to save this image into the directory where the Fallout New Vegas is installed. In my case, it is C, Games, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Fallout New Vegas, and then I've created a file just called steam underscore grid dot jpg. Click save and that will save the image. Okay, so then we want to go ahead and go into steam here and we want to go to, there's an option here that says add a non steam game to my library. Now I'm using a custom steam skin. So yours is going to be probably in the main menu. Uh, in one of these options at the at the top here, but uh, in this skin it is add a non steam game to my library And then we want to click the browse button And we want to go ahead and browse into the fallout new vegas So we're going to go to C games steam steam apps common fallout new vegas and we want to make sure we pick the fnv 4 gbexe So we'll open there and then we will click the one that says add selected programs and we see here's our fnv 4 gb so we're going to right click on that and select properties and we are going to change the name from fnv 4 gb to fallout new vegas and fnv 4 gb okay and then we are going to click close and then we're going to go back to our tile and we're going to choose this option that says set custom image. And then we are going to click browse and it should browse to your install directory and you should see the image that you just downloaded, the steam underscore grid. So click open and then the button that says set image and now we have our image. So from this point forward, whenever we want to play the game, we'll see the original Fallout New Vegas is still there. And then we've got our custom uh, four gigabyte patched version. Now, another option you might want to consider uh, is to go into family view and disable the sharing on the original New Vegas. And that would actually remove it from this list. So it's not even available to open from Steam if you, don't, if you uh if you want to do that again, you're probably not going to want to do that if you're actually sharing your library with your family members, because they're not going to obviously be able to run the hacked version or the, the modified version of Fallout New Vegas without doing all these other previous steps. But OK, we've got the game in Steam and then we want to go ahead and configure uh, LaunchBox and BigBox as well. This is for the TVs 
So from here, uh, we would just go to game, add, and then you would browse to the uh, four gigabyte fallout, enter your information, do the scrape, but I've already done it. So I see here Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition is already there. So just take a quick look at Big Box and we go to New Vegas and there it is. So we can kick it off here from, uh, from Big Box or we can kick it off from Steam, however we want to do it based on what your specific needs are. So we should be all set up. So we'll go back to Steam here real quick and we will kick it off. Okay, so we've got that set up. The next thing that we want to do is get the Nexus Mod Manager. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the NexusMods.com website and select Fallout New Vegas as the game. Um, or you could just go to Nexus Mods here and there should be an option at the top that says Download. So you just click that Download and you'll get to this page. Uh, and then you want to pick the one that says download for Vista, Windows 7, 8, and Windows 10. Uh, if you happen to be on Windows XP, there's a legacy version for Windows XP if you want to get that version. But go ahead and download the tool and then install the tool. And when you've, after you've installed the tool and you run it for the first time, you're going to see a window appear like this, except you won't have any games in it yet. So there'll be an option here that says to scan your installed games. And you click OK, and it'll go through this sequence here where it's going to try to locate every game on your computer that is moddable through Nexus. And when it finds the games that you have, you can actually just click the green check to approve that these are correct. And then if you know that you don't have uh, some of the games it's searching for, you can just click the X's and to cancel the searches. Uh, there's also an option out of the bottom where you could just click stop searching and it'll just stop searching. So we'll click OK and it'll present the list of games that you can mod. So we're going to pick Fallout New Vegas. Now the first time it loads is going to look something like this. Um, you're going to be, before you see this screen though, you'll be presented with like a, a setup wizard. Uh, it's going to ask you for like what, what path it should save your mod files to and where the virtual install should be. I typically just leave those default values as they are and just click next next to the wizard. Leave everything set to the default values. You can modify those settings um, and they basically just dictate where your mod files get stored and things like that. So um, it's actually going to ask you for these two values, mod directory and install info. And I just leave those to the default value. But you can change like the mod path somewhere else if you want to store these mods on a separate disk or something like that. So when the program loads, you'll see it's got all these categories in here, which I'm not a big fan of. So the first thing I do is click this bottom button here to switch it to just show a flat list of all the mods. When you click this, it'll be empty because you haven't installed any mods. Uh, but obviously over the years, I've had lots and lots of mods installed. Currently, I have everything disabled. So I have no mods running against my game other than the ones we manually installed in the last video. Okay, so uh, before we go and start installing mods, we want to go ahead and configure the loot tool, which is the load order optimization tool. So uh, what we do here is we want to go and download loot. So we're going to go along to this GitHub page for loot and go to the releases. And then here's our releases. Be sure that you don't download the loot API. You don't need that. You can get either the loot installer or the loot dev build. The installer will give you an MSI that you can install through Windows installer and then manage it through the control panel if you want to do that. Or you can just get the raw files, which is what I typically do. I just download this whatever latest loot build there is and then save this somewhere on the disk. I will typically have a directory in my Fallout folder or Skyrim folder that's just called tools and in there that's where I uh, extract this 7-zip file that we download. So once you've downloaded loot then you want to go ahead and uh, click this little folder with the tools on it and then this will be great for you because you haven't set it up but you'll click on this link here where it says launch loot and you'll get a browse dialog asking you of where the loot is currently installed. 
So you're going to want to navigate to where you have loot, which I actually don't know. Think that my loot is actually, like I said, I've got mine installed for Skyrim because it's the same tool across all the... So yeah, I've got a Skyrim tools and then I've got loot 10.2, 10, 10, 10 which is the, that version. So we just select the folder that loot is in and click OK. And now the loot becomes colder and we can launch loot. So in Nexus non Mod Manager, we're looking at this tab that says Mods, and this is a flat list of all the mods. If we click on this tab, it says Plugins. These are the plugin mods. So right now it's just the New Vegas and all the, the official DLCs. As you install mods, a lot of mods come with ESMs or ESPs, which are, are actual mod plugins, um, and they need to be loaded in a specific order. If you load a mod in the wrong order, um, where a mod depends on another mod, then you'll crash the game. The game won't load. It'll just immediately crash. So getting the load order correct is really important. So every single time that you install a mod, we would typically go here, click that launch loot button, and then that will load loot. And we can see here's the plugins we currently have, which are all the default ones. First time you run this, it may give you some prompts. It may tell you something about your plugins.txt file being read only or something to that effect. But click OK through that stuff or go change your plugin file to not be read only if there's any kind of issues. But first thing you are want to do is click this. It says update the master list. And the master list will go out and basically get a, a giant list of all the known mods for New Vegas. Um, this drop down up here lets you change the game that you're managing the load order for. So if it doesn't say New Vegas, be certain that you select New Vegas. And then you just click this little grid here to sort your plugins. And if there were any changes needed, an apply button would be up here up here to the left. You would click the apply and it would resort these plugins so that um, you know you have the highest chance of success for for loading the game. So every time you play the game. Um, after installing a mod, I'd ensure that you run loot to make sure that that mod is uh, going to be reordered into a order which is likely not going to cause your game to crash immediately. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is actually get a mod installed. So um, we're just going to pick a mod here, one of my personal favorites. Uh, it's a mod called Connell Rad 640 Civil Defense Radio. Uh, this is a custom radio station that adds all the tracks that you see here something like 60 or 70 tracks the radio station is fantastic i think uh, and i personally wouldn't want to actually play uh the game without this mod uh you once you find the mod the colorado mod you click files and then you'll have a link down here where it says download with manager or download manually from here on out generally you're always going to want to download with the manager so you just click that link, download with manager. Uh, it's likely going to ask you to log in, as you can see here. So you need to go ahead and log in with that free account that you created last video. Uh, but you click download with manager, and then it will open the Nexus Mod Manager if it's not currently running. And then it's going to put the mod in your list. Now, what you're looking at here is if you see mods that are gray, then that means that they have never been installed if they have a green check mark, that means they are currently installed. And they have, if they have a red circle with a line through it, then that means that they have been installed but have been deactivated at some point. So you can see here, uh, looking through this list of the ones that I have, all of mine are basically either have never been installed or have been installed and are currently deactivated. So as you install mods, you, know, you install a mod and then the mod doesn't really work correctly, you can uh, double click it and it'll deactivate it, uh, but it will still remain in this list. So we can see here is where I've had Kyle Rad installed, but it's currently deactivated. So for you, it would be gray. But all we're going to do here is highlight the mod and double click it. And that's it. It's gone green. That means that's currently installed. So if we go to plugins, we see down here by default, whenever you install a mod, it goes to the very bottom of the load order. So we're just going to go to loot and we're going to sort plugins and there's no apply. So I only have one mod and it's going to load the, the modded plugin at the very bottom of the list after all the DLCs. So as I install more mods, mods that have dependencies on one another, I'll resort and that uh, order will change. From this point, each time you install a mod, it's a very good idea to launch the game 
to make sure that the mod works and it won't crash you. So it's a good idea to, uh, you know, play the default game through the beginning, through the beginning segment where you meet the doctor and choose all your traits and your skills, and then you're able to actually move around in the open world. Um, that's where the point that you want to be at when you start installing mods, so then you have to keep replaying that opening sequence. So you can just click here, the launch for gigabyte, or you can launch it from Steam or whatever, but uh, in this drop down here, by default, it'll probably be launch New Vegas. We're going to change that to launch for gigabyte. Then we're going to want to go ahead and launch a game and All right, and we will check our mod. So in this case, we added a new radio station. So if we go to radio, we see there it is, Connell Red 640. And there's our new radio station. So our mod is working just fine. Okay, so we've got our first mod installed. Okay, so that will finish us up this time around. Uh, next time we'll start looking at some of the mods that I like and the order in which I typically install those mods. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll talk to you later.